Hello and good evening. Welcome to Ham Radio 2.0 live from the Ham Shack. My name is Jason. My call sign is Kilo Charlie 5 Hotel Whiskey Bravo and today we're looking at the brand new TYT DMR radio. The MD390. It is an upgrade from the MD380. Uh, TYT is not discontinuing the 380, at least not at this time, not that I've heard of. I just got a bunch of them in and put, posted them on my website and they... Uh, I've already sold a few of them anyway with uh, emails from customers about others. So uh, the MD380 is still out there. It's still about the same price point that it was before. In fact, they dropped the price on the MD380 a while back, if you notice, and that was about the time they announced the MD390. So I got a few of these radios in as test radios so that I could do a video and I could check it out, put my own code plug into it. And carried around town for a week or two. Um, so I've had the radio for two days at the at the time of this recording of this intro video. I've had the radio for two days. I shot a code plug into it. I used it a little bit at a ham fest this weekend, and um, just just kind of on simplex. They didn't have DMR in the area, but uh, Corey, my uh, my friend that helps me at my ham fest, Corey KG5 AHI, he and I usually talk on simplex four at ham fests. So if you come to a ham fest. Where you know I'm going to be, key up on simplex number four. Uh, if you go to dmrmark.net and look up the uh, recommended simplex frequencies, there's four UHF simplex frequencies listed. And the fourth one down is what we're calling simplex four. So we usually use that one at Hamfest. <laughs> We've never had anyone complain about interference or anybody come back and talk to us and say, hey, we're using this channel. I don't think anybody's on there uh, most of the time. So. Uh, we used it there. The MD390 worked great, and uh, I'm going to use it a little bit next week, uh, just kind of tooling around about town uh, normally like I do. So let's take a look at the MD390. Uh, I am going to give a giveaway for this. Um, yeah, I'm going to do a giveaway for this radio since it's brand new. We're going to give an MD3, and I've got them listed right now for $179.99 on my website. And uh, that's about the price point the, the MD380 was when it came out. I expect that it will probably drop in like three to six months, something like that. But uh, right now, that's the price of them. And I think that's pretty competitive. If I see anybody list them lower than that, I will lower my price. But uh, right now, I haven't seen anybody list them at all. I think I'm the first one to actually have them listed online. Uh, knock on wood on that one. That won't last long. But anyway, I wanted to do an intro video. So I didn't order a lot of them. I've just got a few of them. But I will be doing a giveaway. Let's do... Let's give away the MD390 to the 10th person to donate $10 on an annual subscription at livefromthehamshack.tv. Go to livefromthehamshack.tv, look on the right-hand column. There'll be a PayPal donation button on the right side. You can choose $5, $10, $25, $50, $50 or $50 on an annual subscription, not monthly, not weekly, but annual, once a year. Choose the $10 amount and then go to the post for this radio on livefromthehamshack.tv and say, hey, I just donated. Please put my name in the hat. And uh, when we get to 10, I'll announce, hey, we're, we're at number 10, so I don't want people to keep donating thinking that the radio still hadn't been won. So I just gave away the, a um, couple weeks ago, I gave away the Baofeng Tech uh, UV5001 that I did a review on, and the TYT UV8000D, that one's still out there for up for grabs. But we're going to go ahead and do the MD390 because I think it'll be a popular one. So I know a lot of people are looking forward to it. So let's take a look at the radio and see what we see. Okay, as promised, this is the unboxing of the new Titera DMR radio, the MD390. As you can see the box there, it looks uh, just like the 380 box, really. And that's typical of these Chinese vendors. They uh, overuse or reuse boxes from multiple models of radios. Get it kind of centered there. There we go. And a good way to tell is the label on the side here that uh, we can zoom into. Right there, model MD390. It's... Uh, Complying with Moto Turbo Tier 1 and Tier 2. 
waterproofed IP67 and a GPS function. This unit does not have a GPS function. At the time of this video, this, the unit uh, with the GPS function is actually not available yet. Uh, TYT is planning on adding that later. So this is the UHF model. We're going to do an unboxing here real quick. And I, I will confess, I've actually un already unboxed this. I unboxed it and took it apart as soon as I got it. So I just kind of put it back in here for the video. But here's the radio. At first glance, it kind of looks, uh, well, it, it looks almost exactly similar to the MD380, but it's not. It's not exactly similar to it. It's just if you haven't seen one in a while or you're not used to looking at it, it does have a bit different and this much, much, much heavier feel to it. So it's IP67 rated. So it's got uh, it's got a really good uh, hearty feel, solid knock around power to it. So here's something that's cool that the MD380 didn't have. This unit comes with a push to talk earpiece. Fits in the mic side, push to talk, and the earpiece right there. So I didn't order these. This was just in the box. So if you order one of these radios for me, you're going to get that for free with it. This is the programming cable. This this does not come with it. Titera charges for it, so most of your vendors are going to charge for it too. Some people give it away for free. I can't remember if I've posted it with the. It, give, it comes free with my MD380s, and I just absorbed that cost. Uh, I don't remember what I posted on the MD390s yet. This is the standard rubber duck antenna here. And the MD380 comes with a second antenna, but it does not come with an antenna uh, 12 inch whip. So this one comes with a 12 inch whip here. Kind of flexible. That's kind of cool. And then of course you've got your your belt clip and your desk charger here. And a USA plug. So that was kind of neat. I was surprised to see the longer whip as the second antenna. And I was surprised to see the push to talk earpiece in there. So that was a nice uh, bonus on this radio. I'm just going to put the uh, standard rubber duck on it right now. And I took an, I, I shot a code plug into this thing earlier uh, in the week. So it is, it's got a couple of channels in it. But, uh, So you'll see that the face looks just almost exactly like the uh, 380, except that it shows you the name of the zone. That top channel I'm on there is Simplex 3. The zone name is Saginaw. You can, it cuts it off, but the zone name is 7 Saginaw. I put the 7 dot in front of it. That's Saginaw is a repeater out here in the DFW area. And then the, it's got the channel number under it. And the, this backlight timeout, you can change that in the menu also. Uh, this channel 4. So you know you're on channel 4 in the Saginaw zone on simp on what I've uh, dubbed Simplex channel 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, me and the guys out here in DFW, we, we decided to use... Uh, we, were, we had a discussion one day about which Simplex channels would be best to use if we travel from place to place. And uh, we decided to use the four that are listed on DMR Mark's website. Um, there's four UHF and two VHF channels listed on their website, so we've just dubbed that Simplex 1, 2, 3, and 4. If you ever find me at a ham fest, key up on Simplex 4 right here, which we're, uh, the frequency on Simplex 4 is 433.450. Uh, talk group 1, time slot 1. I'm sorry, talk group 99, time slot 1, color code 1. And uh, talk around, obviously. So... So there's that. It's got um, this is you know this DMR transceiver down here at the bottom that wasn't printed there before. This is kind of neat. It's got it's got a little owner sticker right here. You can write your call sign on the side of it there. And this part right here, I thought this was kind of strange. This looks like a Motorola cover. Have to unscrew it there. It came pretty tight on there. When you take it off. It's just basically your regular Kenwood plug behind it. 
And I'm like, well, why did they put that on there? And then I remembered, it's because it's a waterproof radio. So they've got this in there with the little lip around it, around the two ports there. And there's a little rubber gasket around, you can't really see it well in the video, but there's a rubber gasket right there covering the speaker port and the microphone port. So once you clamp this thing down on it, it uh, protects your ports there from water getting into them. I don't know if I'd submerse it or not. The IP67 is supposed to be submersible down to so far. I don't remember how far it is. But I don't know if I'd submerse it or not, but uh, you could at least get it rained on. It wouldn't wouldn't be a big deal. Take it out to the beach. Get it splashed on. Not a big deal. So this uh, belt clip right here is part of the radio, not part of the battery. Uh, so sometimes that's uh, sometimes that's uh, people don't like it when they uh, attach the belt clip to a battery because uh, to get a second or extended battery for it, you have to get another belt clip or change out your belt clip every time. Nobody wants to do that. There's the FCC ID on it right there. Uh, it reads uh, POD MD380. Huh. Or no, that's not the FCC ID ID right there. 10337-MD380. So it's type accepted for FCC. At least it claims it is. So that is it right there. Very sturdy. Like I said, I was banging it on the, on the desk a minute ago. And uh, here's the simplex channel. KC5 HWB testing on Simplex. And let's see, I've got my mobile unit on back here. Let's see if I've got Simplex plant programmed in. I think I do. Yeah, here we go. Simplex 2. Okay. No, that's Simplex 1. KC5. H W B, KC five H W B testing simplex two, D M R. It's kind of echoing. If you can hear that in the microphone, it's kind of echoing because I'm standing right here next to it. I'm keyed up and my C S eight hundred's on behind me here. So, KC five H W B testing simplex two, D M R review of the T Y T M D three ninety KC five H W B. So there you go. Sounds just as good as the MD380, maybe a little bit better. It's got, oh, I wanted to show you the firmware version. I think it's got a newer version of firmware here. Uh, utilities, radio, uh, radio info version. Firmware version is 2.034, which is 2.34. And the uh, CPS version is 1.3. Now, the CPS is different because it says it's hard-coded MD390 when you install the CPS. You can download the, uh, the programming software, CPS, Customer Programming Software. That's what that stands for. You can download the programming software from our website, grapevineamateurradio.com. It is free. And it looks exactly like the MD380 software, which looks like the Zastone software, which looks like the Puxing software, which looks like two or three other models of software. But as far as I can tell, it's I haven't tried programming the 390 from the 380 software or vice versa because they're hard coded when you open up the software it says model number and it says MD390 and that's not a number you can change in the software so I'm assuming it's like the rest of these softwares that you know it's the same manufacturer but you can't change it up because they uh, made it specifically for that one radio anyway so far so good I really like this radio I'm gonna finish my code plug up uh, if you live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, you're welcome to the code plug. I'll be posting on my website uh, soon, as soon as I'm done with it. I've got one. I've got one for the MD380 that covers the entire state of Texas, and I can't remember if I posted that one up there yet or not. But if I haven't, I will soon. Uh, you're welcome to email me about it. And I'll send it to you. But uh, that is the MD390. It's nothing uh, spectacular or revealing or no big new whiz bang thing everything's very very similar to the 390 but it is much more much more heavy heavy duty and it's ip67 rated and it's just it feels better it's got a better sturdy rugged feel to it than the 380 so 
Uh, good luck. Hope you like it. I'll be selling these on my website. I'm sure you'll be seeing them pop up on multiple other websites also. There we have it. That's the first look at the TYT MD390 UHF DMR-HT. I assume they'll probably be making a VHF version soon. Uh, it's not out yet to my knowledge, but honestly, I haven't asked about it. I've still got some MD380s in VHF that, uh, that have been sitting on my shelf for like three months. And uh, there's some VHF repeaters out there, but there's just not many people wanting VHF radios for whatever reason, but they're, uh, they are out there. So the MD390 will probably be available in VHF at some point in time, but uh, right now I just have the uh, I just have the UHF models, the, the few of them here. So uh, very rugged, very heavy-duty feeling radio. It's right here. It is, uh, you know, maybe a touch bigger. I meant to get an MD380 and set it next to it, in here and I forgot to grab it it's in the house and I'm already recording so um, it's it may be a touch bigger in length and height wise and in, in height wise and in, in in width wise here than the uh, than the 380 uh, but not much not much bigger than the 380 and it is a uh, um, it's got a bigger battery I think this is a 2800 milliamp hour battery that comes with the 390 so but it's but it is much heavier. It's much heavier, much more sturdy, much, um, like I said, I was, I was knocking around a minute ago, and it, uh, <laughs> I mean, I didn't hit it really hard, but I knocked it on the table a few times, and so getting out of the car and your belt clip, uh, gets caught on your seat belt, and the, either belt clip breaks or it just comes off your belt and it falls down and rolls, hits the concrete and rolls down the, the driveway down the street, um, you might scratch your screen up, but it's doubtful that you're going to hurt your hurt the performance of your radio because it is built really tough. So, anyway, go check out uh, check out the posting on my website, uh, GrapevineAmateurRadio.com. I've still got a I've got a, a large shipment of the MD380s in not too long ago, and the MD390s. Um, I've just got a few of those right now, but I will be getting in more as time progresses. So. Uh, Comment on the video. Tell me uh, what you think about it. I'm interested to hear uh, some opinions out there. If anyone picks one up from another source or if you pick one up from my website, either one, uh, shoot me an email or comment on this video and let me know how you like the performance of it. 73, and thank you for watching.